Welcome back. This is Dan Havey, and today we're going to answer a couple of questions that people had who are going through the OFA. We're going to start off with one that Penny had, and then uh, actually two more that came from other uh, students in the class right now. And so what she says is, and we're looking at this picture, this is one she provided in Facebook, is like, how do you add the text under the product name to show that the total is? So that what she's talking about is this right here, total of $58.47. Then she says, uh, well, let's go down to the third one here. Then she says, how do you add the text over here that will say $19 per each? It's not completed on this image that she has here yet. And then the third one is actually a question that multiple people have had, which is, okay, great, we can highlight this third item right here, but still natively in ClickFunnels, it will automatically check the first one. How can we check the third one? So that's the third thing we're going to take a look at here. And then beyond that, there was another question that people were having is that if they had, in the particular cases, they had warranties for products. So they had one product, they were selling two products, three products. And what they wanted then is in the bump to have the matching number of warranties and also have that matching number of warranties automatically be selected when you clicked on one of the uh, different products up here at the top. And then the third and final one, or fourth or fifth, or whatever it's going to be, uh, and final one is I'm also going to show you very quickly how to open up, you can't see it on the page right here, open up the summary at the bottom so it's visible the entire time on the page. So let me give you a better example of this one right here. And it comes from the Q&A call from June 18th, 2024. And a much better image of it here. We're about, probably start watching at about 120 when they start talking about this. And Trey goes in and he shows exactly the way he would have it on his page. Um, and uh, But he does not. He does not go through this uh, really um, when he's talking about the V-curve on day six of the training right here. He's talking about the V-curve. He never mentions the way he would have it be displayed on his screen. So I think it's a really good thing to be on the Q&A calls or at least watch them in replay because there's a lot of cool stuff he talks about on the Q&A calls that is not necessarily in the training. So now let's jump in here and see how we get this set up. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a bunch of products. So in this case here, I'm just calling mine widgets like we would in any econ class. And so we got, um, that's econ as in economics, not e-com as in e-commerce. So uh, we got one widget, two, three, five, and ten. I didn't realize when I was building this that I also needed a fourth widget so I put that up here later on and then because we're also dealing with the warranties I did one through uh, four five and then ten warranties up here as well for the warranties I just set those up as digital products because they would not be physical so you don't have to worry about that and each one just is three dollars six nine uh, 12 15 so each one of the warranties is three dollars in my example and for the widgets then, I again went back to Trey's V-curve pricing here. And I did, uh, let me see, I did five, ten, eleven dollars twenty-five cents, twenty-five, uh, whatever the fourth one was, twenty. And then uh, we had 10 widgets for $38.75. Now the only thing you have to do other than set up your product is... We have to come into the third product. So in our case here, we are going to have the third product be the one that is highlighted. And so we're going to come in here. We're going to say $3.75. Well, where do you set that up? We're going to just click on edit price. We're going to come over here where it says name. We're going to put in $3.75 each. Make sure that visible is turned on. Uh, shown at checkout visible. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you need that turned on. Turn it off. Test it. But I'm 99% sure you need that on. And then come down here to the bottom and save it. That's all you have to do in the setting up of the products. Now let's go into the um, page itself. So here's our checkout page right here. And if you have no products set up at this point, you will want to, you could click here because there will be a um, a warning sy symbol there and also none of the products or the bumps will show up below it. You can also click here and come down where it will say add products, or in this case, manage products, because I have them in there, you can open them up and you can add products here. So you just click on add a product, 
pick out the ones that you want. I already have all of mine set in here. And then if you want it to be an order bump and show up down here at the bottom, you simply would click on the gear and you would say the product is an order bump. So I will turn that one off. And then it will pop right up here to the top as a regular product. Well, of course, we don't want that. So let's turn it back onto an order bump and do it there. Now, if you don't set up the products at this level, that is actually okay. I don't want to click that X. Let me click this one. That's okay because you can set it up inside of the order form itself. Okay, so before we go any further, I just realized I didn't show you what the end result of this looks like. So let's go take a look at that. So here it is uh, when it's all finished. And what you're going to see here is we've got the big yellow box here. I said most popular and pretty large size print, three widgets, the whole thing. And then down here at the bottom, we have our three warranty checked. And if we come up here, let's say we're going to go to two warranty or two widgets, changes it to two warranty five widgets, five warranty, and then all you have to do is click on add, it adds it to the bottom, puts the numbers down here, I increase the font size on this, and if I were to continue through the checkout process here and put in my address, I do believe at that point it uh, will populate down here with the total and all that because it has to calculate tax and shipping and stuff like that. So let's jump back in and see what it, what it takes to set this up. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to click on edit. We're going to go inside of here. And right now I have all the code turned off that we're going to look at. It's not a lot of code. Um, it's a little bit because I got like, uh, like I said, we're doing like three or four things here on the code. But let me show you what the page looks like without anything being set on it. And again, here we have one widget clicked, which we wanted our three widgets clicked. And you see here, it's much smaller font size there and over here on the right. And down here at the bottom is showing all of the possible warranties as, a, as an order bump. And the summary is not open to be able to see everything that's going on in there. So let's just take a look at how we set up this form to begin with. Now, normally, when you come into one of these checkout forms, I'm going to the wrong place. Normally, when you come in here, it will be set to two-step. And uh, you could also set it to three-step. And I notice here on the three-step, what it does is it shows you um, the order, uh, the products you can order first. It shows you the products here. And I'm just curious what Trey would think about that. Is this a good idea to show the products first? Or do we do the... Um, the email, phone number, name, uh, shipping address first, or do we just do the full-blown thing like this? I haven't gone through enough of the training to know what he might say on that. But either way, like I said, you normally come in here and it's usually set to two-step. I always suggest set it to one-step. So as you're going through everything, you can see what is changing on the page as you are changing the settings inside of the element themselves. Because there's a whole bunch of different settings in here. We'll just look at a few of them. So I went to the general settings at the top. And if we change the text style, we just, uh, we're going to pull that over. You're going to start to see where things get changed. They had it set to 14 which I think, frankly, is a little bit small. You can set the coloration and everything like that in here. And this is for the container, it says. Now for the inputs, we can also change the text size here as well. And you see where that changes things. And so that's the thing you got to do is just come in here, start clicking on things, and you get, get an idea really fast of what element it is you are changing. And then we can go here to the contact form. Do we want the phone number? That kind of stuff. Uh, third one down is our product select. So this is a very important one right here because this determines which one of these elements is going to be highlighted. So let's go to this element right here. Number four widgets, and you see it changes it to four widgets and then to five widgets. Well, let's put it back to our three widgets. And then we can also edit it by clicking on the pencil. You can turn on the product image if you want. I don't have any. You can change all of your colors. And then here you can change that text. I forget what it was to begin with. Um, I made it to most popular just to match with uh, what they had in the other image right here. They had most popular right there. So that's why I changed that out. And so that's how you do that there. And then we're come, come down here to advanced settings. And if you change the headline, it will change all of the widgets names right there, which I did not want all the products being big. So I did a little bit of code again to change just the one that we're looking at. And then also here we got our description size. So I wanted that to be bigger. 
So I set that for right now. I set that to 18. You, of course, set it to whatever you want. And then I guess you can turn on a product image here and change the size of the image and all that as well. So let's uh, bounce back out of here real quick. And we got our shipping options. You can have that turned on or off. Generally speaking, in e-com, we're going to be looking at... Um, shipping it to them, so you probably want that turned on. Uh, checkout summary, uh, we can have the coupon code. You saw on the live page here, I had a coupon code down there at the bottom. You can turn that on right there by clicking on Enabled. That, again, was under the checkout order summary. Payment method, you can change the font size on that as well. And then um, order bumps. So here's where you can put in all of your order bumps. And again, if you don't have all your products in there, you can come in here and you click on edit the product and you can put them in. So again, we can add from this area here. Same thing in the order form. You can add it from here. So if you forget to do it um, over in this stage here, you can add them all in right here. But now let's look at our three widgets right here. And we'll click on this. And then we say here, total of $11.25 in parentheses. So that takes care of this right here. So that's what that is right there. If we change it, I can just type on there. Did it change it? I have to save it first, apparently. So let's just do that. Did it save it? Okay, there we go. Took a little bit to kick in. Um, so we'll just change that back. So that's where we put that in right there. So the two items that you have to change in order to get this to show up properly is one is right here in the again what is this called um, so this is our description override inside of the product itself and you have to access it from either here or from where you add or manage your products over here on the left and then for the product itself again right in here we went to three widgets and have that open up and we click on this little gear under pricing, and you put in the 375 each right there. So those are the two places where you change those numbers, and we will bounce back out of here and uh, bounce back out of there again. And again, back here, I didn't show you this here, but again, up here, you can edit your product at that point as well right there and go in and change that uh, description override right there. So let me close out of this. And I think we pretty much hit everything here, order bombs, buttons. Okay, so now we have everything on the page the way we want it. Now we have to apply a little bit of JavaScript and CSS code to this to make it look a little bit different. And I'm going to provide the code to wherever I can. The problem is if I, if I put this onto YouTube, I can't put the code in the comments in YouTube or in the description of the video because YouTube will just kick it out because of all the different characters and stuff that are in there that it doesn't like. But if you have the code or you want to copy the code you're going to see on the screen here, you can come up here to your settings and you can click on show code and then you want to click on these this little arrow over here and open up the page so you can actually see the entirety of the page. Now, I have a special little widget that I built for myself that I'm going to use to open mine up with because it just works a little bit better than the built-in element itself. So here we are in the footer code. So inside of the footer code, we're going to put in what is known as JavaScript code. In this particular, we're using a jQuery library, which is built into ClickFunnels. And we're going to say here, Choose a product number to select on page load. So I said three. So let product equals three because we want the third one on our list here to be the one we want to highlight or the one we're going to highlight because also this has to correspond then to what you did inside of here under your product select as we chose the third one here to also highlight on here as well. So you want to make sure that those two correlate. And so we're going to pick number three. If you decide you want two or four, just make sure, again, you uh, line everything up properly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hide all the products and all of the order bumps on the page. So we're going to say on page load, what we want to do, let me see here, are we, no, yeah. On page load, what we want to do is we want to hide all of these uh, products right here on the page and all the warranties. The reason why is we want to hide all the warranties because we only want to choose a singular warranty to show on the page. We don't want them all showing on the page. So if we come over here, you see as we change this out, 
there's only one warranty on the page at any given time. We only want to give them one choice because if they ordered three widgets, you have to have the matching three warranties to go along with it. Apparently, you don't want to sell them three widgets and have them only buy one warranty um, because for whatever reason, that's the way I was asked to uh, build this. So that's what we're going to do there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide those things on the screen so that um, they paint. So as the page is loading up, we don't see them on the screen and then they're on the screen and then they disappear or they're on the screen and number one is checked like we have here. Uh, we would come in and number one would be checked and then all of a sudden it flips to number three. You don't really want the consumer seeing that. Now, if you are in here and you do this as a two-step order form, Let's go to there. If you do this as a two-step order form, they wouldn't see it anyway. It's on the page. It's just being hidden on the page until they get through this first step and get to the second step. But if they were to do a three-step or a one-step order form, they would potentially see it. And again, I don't like the consumer seeing that until it's ready to go and then we paint it to the page at that point. So we're going to come back into our code. Now what we're going to say is on window load. And this is very important here. Because there's two stages of when a page loads. One is what is known as document ready. It's when basically the entire file of information has been sent from the server to your computer's browser and it's ready to start painting stuff onto the screen. Window load means basically everything has been painted onto the page. All the images, all the text, all the everything is on there. But even at that, you will see that the order form itself takes a little bit of time still after that to catch up. But window load was enough of a delay to get it to be able to get onto the screen so that we can start manipulating it. Because that's really the thing. We have to have the element on the page before we can start changing stuff around on the page. So again, we already hit everything. So now we're going to say once the page loads, what we want to do is find this element here. And I'm not going to get too deep into what these elements are, but they are, this is, this here technically is a class. This is a class of elements on the page. And what I'm saying is, it says here, nth of type product. Well, we set our product up here. So it says, go find this this element, which is in this case here, our products, go find this product on the page and show me the third one, or actually click on the third one. By clicking on the third one, what it does is it clicks right there. That has the effect of clicking that element right there. So that's uh, choose our nth of type by clicking on it, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to show all the products on the page. Remember at this point here, all these were hidden. Once that is checked, now we're going to show all the elements on the page. And then what we're going to say is for the order bump down at the bottom of the page, again, we're going to find that element on the page, and we're going to say, give us the nth of type. Give us the nth one. Give us the third one by having the word product right there. So that will give us the third bump on the page. Now, the next one here is very simple. This is what opens up the order summary at the bottom of the page. So it's essentially, it says, uh, the equivalent of clicking right here. Boom, opens it up so you can see everything on the bottom of the page as you're changing out your selections. And then, of course, you can also enter in a coupon code right there if you happen to have one. Then at the bottom down here, we just say is when somebody clicks on one of the products again, so L Product Card Wrapper is referring to the products up here it says when you click on one of those what we're going to do is we're going to hide all of the order bumps you see here i got little little comments at the end of each line here to tell you what it means so it says we're going to hide all of the order bumps on the page because what i don't want to do is to show the new one that just got clicked on so again as i click on five widgets here it changes to five widgets okay so I want to hide all of them first. And you see it's instantaneous. Nothing like flashes on the screen or anything else. It's automatically on here like this. So if I pick, um, if I change it out to 10 widgets, what I want to do is hide all the existing widgets that are showing on the page and then show the one for 10 widgets. And let me just make sure down here at the bottom, yeah, it does seem to be uh, changing out uh, the way it should be. At least it appears to be. Let me see here. I got 10 widgets, and it says add. Let's see what happens when I click on add. Um, okay, 
it uh, it did it right. We got 10 widgets and 10 warranties, and it did it perfectly. Um, so that's good to go. And then let me finish up with the code here, and then I realize there's one thing I kind of didn't show you. Uh, so then we got let product index uh, equals blah, blah. Okay, so then what we're saying here is uh, choose the proper order bump to show and then show that order bump. So we're going to hide all the order bumps, then we're going to pick the one we want to show, and then we're going to show it right there. And so the one thing I was thinking, I think I forgot, was on the order bumps, you want to put it onto modern. If we go to classic, um, nothing, oh, we're in the wrong place here. So this is classic, and it just gives you a check mark like that. I think the modern is better. I haven't really tested it um, by just doing the classic, but I did find if you turn off the bump styling, the um, the, the, these things don't show on the screen at all. The order bumps don't show on the screen at all, so you got to make sure you leave that turned on, and that should be about it. So there you go. Um, let me uh, go back and show you exactly how this works again, and we will just reload the page, and we'll see what we got here. So the problem I was having right there is I had the code turned off. I turned the code back on. I didn't save it, but then I also realized I didn't also talk to you about the CSS. So let's talk about that. Let's take out these comments on here, and we'll uh, talk about the CSS. So what I did here is, so for the L product featured, this is saying the one that is featured, the one that has the uh, yellow highlight on it in our example right here. We want to change the border to two pixels, okay? So what that's going to do is make this bigger. So let me go back over here. Let me save everything. And then this one here, we will open up, and we should be able to see it with all the changes. Okay, so I made the uh, border here bigger, and it just does the two sides and the bottom. I could make it all sides, but I thought, man, that looks okay. If you want to change the color of that, again, you do that right back in where we set this up, which was our product select. Come in here. Right down here, you can change the border color right there if you want. Or you don't. I mean, you don't have to put in the CSS that I'm putting in there. I'm just showing you some examples. Because we also make this bigger. It's italicized and under, underscored and then underlined. And then here we also make the name of this bigger. And again, you can change out the size of the CSS as you're doing that. Uh, the size of the font, I should say. So let's go here. So then we got our L product card highlight. So here's we change the font size to 20 pixels, text decoration to underline, and font style to italics. And then all these other ones are the same here. So we got 24 pixels. That one also uh, corresponds to the three widgets right there, at least it should. And then we got our card info description, 600 on our font weight. That makes this bolder right there. And then we have our final price, so that would be um, this over here is right there, 375, so it's bigger and it is bolder, so I changed the font size and the font weight. And then we got our order summary down at the bottom, I changed the font size and the font weight there as well, so that is this down here at the bottom, if we add this in, it's bigger as well. So that's bigger, and then if we, uh, let's add in my address right there and if we do that now it can calculate the taxes and the shipping and it will be a total at the bottom as well and you see it adds it up properly because it knows that this here should really be eleven dollars and twenty five cents plus nine gives us twenty dollars and twenty five cents now the question you may have is okay great i I want to be able to highlight the stuff. I want to be able to colorize it differently and change the font sizes and the font weights, but I don't have any order bumps that I want to put in there. Well, how you take that out of the code, if you copy the entirety of this code here, all you can do is in front of line 8, you can take that out by putting in two slashes like that. So we can take that out. Now, do you have to take it out? No. Truthfully, you can leave it in there because if you don't have any order bumps on the page, it's not going to show anything anyway. Same thing down here on line 15. If you so choose, you could take out that line by putting in two slashes, or frankly, you could just delete it out. Uh, but if you ever need the code in the future, you might want to leave it in there. And then down here at the bottom, this whole section here, line 22 through 27, you don't need that at all. Uh, again, if you don't have order bumps... So what you can do is you can put in a slash, slash and an asterisk 
and then after it, you can put an asterisk and a slash. That's hard to say. And uh, put that in there, and it will comment out all of that code in between the slashes and the asterisks or asterisks, whatever it is. So I think that is it. I will stop rambling at this point. I think that fixes most of the questions that people had regarding the... Um, regarding the checkout form and having it match up to the way that Trey is doing the V-curve and the way he explained in the Q&A call how to set this up as well. So if anybody has any questions, just let me know.